Hello, I'm Charlie Morrow. I'm Eric Narbas. And I'm Richard Padrello. We are the Man Cave Masters. Well, the motion sensor is not working, so we're just going to plug it in. See how it goes. <laughs> so for our problem statement, we are constructing a device that holds a drink of your choice, and the drink will be raised by motion activation and a telescoping motion. The device will rest on a flat surface, and once you wave your hand over the device, it would raise up in five seconds or less. The idea is to limit the amount of work it takes for you to grab your drink while offering a creative alternative that can be used in any environment, mainly a man cave. The cold holder itself will also be insulated so that the drink remains cold. So our performance goals are listed here. So first of all, we wanted our device to telescope in a vertical motion, which we have achieved. It was also had to be electrically powered. First, we wanted it to be battery powered, but according to Dean Ramsey, he would rather have this device just plugged into a wall. That's why we switched to an electrically powered device. It was to be motion activated, which is currently not working right now, but we're looking into it. Um, Dean Ramsey wanted it to be quiet, but not silent. He wanted it so it wouldn't disturb him while he was watching, but he wanted people to notice it when he uses it. Uh, we were looking to achieve two and a half feet, uh, we only achieved 27 inches so far, but that's without a drink. So if we were to add a drink on top of the cup holder, we would easily achieve two and a half feet. We wanted to extend in five seconds or less, and so far we have it extending in less than a second. And also we wanted the device to be insulated, so we added a cozy material around the cup holder. So our motivation for this project was that me and Eric were waiting for Charlie and we were thirsty. So we thought of what about a robot that would bring a drink to you? But that seemed way too hard to do in a single semester, so we decided on a telescoping cup holder. As well for as market research, we decided to interview Dean Ramsey to see if he would be interested in buying this kind of product for his Mac game. And he said that, yeah, I wouldn't mind spending about a hundred dollars for this type of this type of device. For so for cost accounting, we were allocated one hundred ninety three dollars but we actually only got to spend $170 so far. Uh, we were able to reduce the cost by 3D printing most of the parts. The shaft and the cup holder was 3D printed, as well as the base was bought from Salvation Army for only $2, which greatly reduced the cost. Also, if we were to manufacture this in a larger scale, we would be able to reduce the cost, as well as if we were to buy a more suitable motor so that we would not have to use a motor drive. Okay, so, one of the first things that we needed to do was figure out how this thing actually worked. We were kind of caught between two ideas of a scissor lift and telescoping motion. One of the key design considerations we had to take into account though was we wanted our product to be sleek. So we went with the telescoping design because we thought it would be a little bit sleeker than a scissor lift and it could also be faster in theory. But we had to get the motion down so we wanted to build an initial prototype separate from our final. Uh, that would just get our rope system down and help us figure out how exactly we were going to get this thing to go up. So, here's our original design. It's made out of just some PVC we found lying around. Don't worry about the heights here. That's not really what's important. We just want three shafts that fit inside each other and we just drilled some holes in there and fed a rope through them. So as you can see, if you pull this one, the second shaft comes up with the first one and then you have to hold this second one, which is something that we fixed in our final prototype, and you can continue to pull. You hear that a little bit, uh, the friction that it gets, and it's very much harder to pull up the second shaft as compared to the first one. So that's something that we, this prototype was very helpful for us to do. We found out that was one of our biggest concerns that we had to deal with moving forward. That led to some of the filler designs that we have in our shafts on the final prototype. In terms of engineering analysis, other than this alpha prototype, we also did a 22 ounce weight on a fixed version of this very shaft. We had a PVC version and this uh, 3D printed material, uh, and both of them were able to help hold up uh, with differing sizes. We went with this in the end. Okay. okay, so now to talk a little bit about some of the risks we have. And as you can see, there's a pretty complicated design in our base here. And one of the biggest concerns is a rope failure. If a rope were to fail at this point, it would be hard even for us to fix it. Uh, so the other thing is stability. Uh, 
we definitely don't want it wobbling around too much and if a child were to hit it or something like that we don't want it to fall so uh, it's a little flimsy right now because this isn't the actual extension um, but we stability is another big risk uh, to our project uh, the other is ineffective insulation we think that's a pretty low risk we've got the springs that are able to push the insulation right up against your beverage regardless of size and it can expand about an inch so you have a great deal of flexibility in terms of size of beverage and it will still be insulated no matter what uh, another issue that we could have is the motor being too powerful and we figure that at the moment it might actually be a little bit too powerful but we could always implement a gear system to tone that down a little bit if we needed to right now we kind of like the vast extension it's just the uh, rapid retraction that we're a bit concerned about so the codes and standards that we used when developing our device were actually for aerial lifts and scaffolding. And that may seem a bit of a far cry from what we have, but because it is such a unique product, there isn't really a code and standard that's been developed for this particular type of product. So we're using the ones for scaffolding and aerial lifts, and one of the main concerns there is not flinging people off the lift. We don't necessarily have to be too concerned about that, uh, but at the same time, it's a good principle that we have to consider. We don't want the drink to go up too fast. We don't want the drink to come down too fast. We don't want it to get foamy or, worst case scenario, fly out of our, uh, out of our device and possibly get a uh, drink on your, on your device and on your surround. Uh, the other thing, of course, is for them is stability. Uh, scaffolding and an aerial lift, you don't want them to be flying around too much. And we had the same sort of concerns. Uh, we think that many of our customers will have cats and dogs and children and you don't want them knocking into it and knocking it over. So we took those into consideration and it's pretty sturdy, uh, so we think we did a job with that. All right, so um, along with mechanical engineering, what we incorporated was a little bit of electrical engineering as far as the Arduino and the Arduino programming goes, and that's also uh, computer engineering. This was new to our group, and I had dealt with an Arduino in the past, so I put myself in charge and um, while I don't regret it, it was a lot of work, especially pretty much starting from scratch. Um, so I found out that in order to power our motor, which was um, required 12 volts, that not only do we need the Arduino that can only sustain five volts, that we needed a siren motor driver, which we purchased. Um, we were able to attach the motion sensor to the Arduino, and I was able to have a um, create a code that showed that that worked and it did work at one point and I'm pretty confident that I can fix it for um, in the not so distant future. So our device needs, um, it's a very primitive design, we definitely need some upgrades. As far as the sleekness goes, we are pretty happy with how this looks. Um, another constraint that we had was that our 3D printer could only print 5.75 um, inches, um, pretty much a max of 6, but we wanted to make sure that we were well within that range. Um, instead of gluing several pieces together, we wanted uh, just to stick with the one solid piece so in the future we could have taller shafts, which even though that would um, decrease stability, we could actually have several more shafts instead of just two of them. Um, so as far as what we're going to do next and some out of scope suggestions, uh, the first thing is that we've, we have a lot of space to personalize each, um, each cup holder. Now what could be interesting with that is while we're printing these designs if someone wanted say an Alabama cup holder, uh, they could have a crimson shaft, white shaft, crimson white, um, with stickers saying Roll Tide. Uh, and also, one issue is that, you know, we're trying to reduce the work for a uh, man cave owner. And they won't have to move until the drink is empty and then they'll have to ultimately get up and get another one. And sure, they can have a mini fridge right next to them, but if we just had an extension on this base, it wouldn't even have to be a cooler. It could just be a few holders that would fit about nine beers right here and they could just have them um, and then just reinsert them on their own. Uh, the possibilities are, are, uh, are endless. Um, we're pretty confident that we could construct a device that people would want to buy, but the main thing is that it just has to be as cool as possible.